pay no attention to the finger holding the sticky on. <laughs> to the to the person the behind, the behind the curtain. Yes. Ta -da! <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the most dangerous show of the week. The VSC edition of the Sun Dragon Side Show. Now I get to put this back in its little see. Ta -da! Look how fancy our special effects are. It's so fancy. So fancy. We we use the big bucks for the uh, special effects. <laughs> what big bucks? But yes. <laughs> That's assuming we had any. Okay. Hi. I'm Rebecca. I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber. In sunny but chilly Brevard, North Carolina. I'm Liz. I'm the minion there. I'm squirreling because I saw needles under the, our huge pile of yarn. And these are ones that I could put away. Although this one is an interchangeable. Is one of my interchangeables. So that doesn't get put away. That stays with me. But um hot mess. Yes. So everywhere. Hot. All right. I'm gonna get this out of the way. Hi. I've already said hi, but I'm still getting myself sorted. How's everybody doing today? We're doing just fine, and we have a fun yarn to talk about that, honestly, we've had in the shop for a while. Ooh, ooh, I have one more thing I can get to show. I've actually made a lot of things with this, and I have two projects now on needles with this yarn. I, I started several projects with this yarn. Sarah, hope. Started. Um, I finished two shawls with this, and I'm really excited about what's on my needles. And since we're finally... Oh yeah. We have a decent stock in it. It's one of those like <laughs> okay, the the conundrum of being a yarn shop owner is all these yarns and you want to have samples in all the yarns and yet you really need to you, you find you like a few of them more than others. So I keep making things in maybe like five different yarns in the shop. And the other yarns are saying we feel so neglected and they're good yarns. I just, I squirrel. <laughs> oh, and speaking of squirreling, when I left the shop, I put this in my stories yesterday um, on Instagram. When I left the shop and I went back out to the parking lot and there's people, two parking lots down and in between the little white squirrel mom uh -huh. was just hanging out on the Brevard insurance, like oh, cool. uh, fence it was just like, I don't care there's people around, whatever. I tried to get some pictures, but my phone makes her look really far away. But she's pretty used to she's used to people. Most of the squirrels downtown are pretty used to people. Yeah. Like but the white squirrels do exist. Yes. So our squirreling, we can we can tag into the whole, you, you know, blame on the white squirrels. Or we can just say, hey, it's a thing in Brevard. So, you know, we have the white squirrels and we squirrel and we all squirrel. So <laughs> but it was really cute to see her because she was just sitting there. Every time I see her recently, she's got one something that like this size relative to her her face that she probably got from up here. Or it's a black walnut. Well, I bet it is a black walnut, but I keep seeing her carrying black walnuts around like up here on the plaza. Yeah. So maybe she didn't get it from here, but she she's might always have, carrying a black walnut around. She she might be squirreling them away for winter in the planters. So um we could have a black walnut tree growing in the planters <laughs> next year. Next next year at Quixote's, they'll go, where did this come from? <laughs> no, but she was just sitting there with one of these black walnuts, I guess it was, you know? And then she just sat there for a while and I took some pictures and then she ran along the fence and ran away. I didn't get out of the car because I figured I'd scare her off, but she was just like, what's up? We don't, we don't see them that often in town, but we've got the one designated now. So yeah. anyway, what was I saying? <laughs> We're putting Friday Harbor on sale today. Cascade Friday Harbor. Yes, let's not leave you in suspense any longer. Cascade Friday Harbor. It, it's lovely and squishy and good stitch definition and worsted weight. And Liz can read stats. I will read stats. Let me find stats. Let me not feel all of her thunder. Let's read stats. Friday Harbor is 80% merino wool and 20% silk. You get 219 yards per 100 grams. They recommend a US 7 needle uh 4.5 millimeter hand wash cold lay flat to dry all the fun bits yeah so 
they're recommending a seven, which means it's kind of on the thin side. We we could interpret that as meaning it's on the thin side of worsted. I mean, the yardage, what was the yardage? 219. 219. I mean, that's actually 220. Anywhere between 200 and 220, I think, is a good solid worsted weight. Yeah. Um, I think when a lot of people, especially ones who haven't been to the nicer yarn shops, they when they think of worsted, they think of Red Heart, which is a little thicker than this. Um, but the merino and um the silk, what I want to be really clear about with this is it's not superwash merino. It's not the the shiny version of merino. It it um it's more of a matte finish. The silk, I think, adds a little bit to the softness and it's it, there's a little slubby texture to it. Like not like not like you're gonna have inconsistency in thickness. Almost like a heathery. Yeah. Some of them it's not as noticeable. Like the dye takes yeah. differently to different colors of it. So some of them you've got some more white flecky heatheriness or almost tweediness but not quite going on with it and some of them like the burgundy it's like no there's some colors where the the slubs don't show up as much um i've made a few shawls and i have a sweater and i'm starting another shawl with this because i really like it um it's it's squishier than it feels in the skein is a lot like the um yarn we had last week i've lost the name la pampa la pampa yes. i was going patagonia and i was like no that's not it it's because it's got a, a bunch of plies in it just like yeah. the la pampa does so it's got a, a decent twist on it um but it's thinner and again the matte finish because la pampa yeah. kind of had a matte finish to it um and it's like my brain is like oh all these things to say and then my mouth goes i'm i'm so <laughs> one of my projects that i started with it is the arctic wrap by mm, um, okay. Paul Soho. Mm -hmm. and um i'm doing it on a 10 needle and it fluffs to fill the space like i wish i'd brought that it, in it fluffs but it's not fuzzy no like one of the other yarns like in this category that would be good to do a shawl or a sweater or anything out of is the ultra alpaca from barocco that's a little fuzzy the alpaca makes it a little fuzzy this has really crisp stitch definition because it's just the merino it's just the same like it's a lot yeah. like the la pampa again just a different thickness um and the silk adds a little bit of luxury to it on top of the merino but merino that's not super wash i think people are surprised it's not as soft and squishy as they think it should be and that's the super wash quality often it's still soft and springy and squishy the spring to it is awesome so um to show off things, and then we'll go about colors. Uh, to show off things that I've made with the Friday Harbor. The, the first thing I made was, um, this is a Nisa shawl, I believe, mm -hmm. by, um, like, this is the direction it was knit from the bottom to the top by D. O'Keefe. I love D. O'Keefe's designs. And this is all garter out here, extra squishy. Cable. It's really good for cable stitch definition. Cable Cables and, and basic lace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really good because there isn't the fuzz. It's soft without, like, again, springy. I'm feeling it squish and spring back under my fingers. Without the fuzz of the alpaca, I still would do cables with alpaca, you know. Uh, what I'm wearing is a superwash merino. And again, there's a little more shine to it as opposed to this. So this one I didn't even block. If I blocked, the cable might flatten a little bit, but it would still be very pretty. But I never blocked this guy. So... This is in, I'm going to go through some colors while I hold up things. This is in the crocus color. It's color number two. This is an early addition to our online website. So right now it just has color numbers instead of names in the pictures. And I haven't had the energy to update that. So um, use the number and then use the drop down menu to find that number to find what you want. Um, I We have good pretty good stock on all of this but one colorway one colorway we're a little low on but crocus purple and it's it's a really nice like it's deeper than lavender it's right? a medium purple it's a nice medium yeah. purple which again really love nice and bright too right okay so next the next thing i made out of this um cheryl faust published a pattern called the chain and she did it in black and white and it is a mosaic, I'm trying to like, huh. 
it is a knit in mosaic fashion, which means slipping stitches. And it's garter mosaic, which means there's a whole lot, like every single row is knit. It's just no purling. No purling. And it's where you hold the yarn when it's floating behind another one with slip stitches that gives it this really bold graphic. So I decided to do it because, again, I knew the stitch definition was going to be gorgeous. I decided to do it in an off white and a charcoal, like a super char deep charcoal of these colors, because we don't have white and black in this yarn. We have off white and we have super, super dark gray. The off white is color 08 or ecru. And the dark is color number 10 and it's charcoal. It's just a char, it's a flat charcoal gray. It's, they're both flat colors and they, yeah. they're really pretty in relief like this. I want to say this used two skeins of each color, potentially. I have to go back and look. I also know that I had to change the, the edging on this because it's supposed to have a white edging, but I didn't want to crack into a whole new skein just for the, the edging. Um, if you want to know how much each of these takes, contact us because I'm going to make estimations, but you should always use the pattern to, to calculate how much yarn you're going to need. So um, actually, I might have I might have done two black and one white. And, and that's the reason crack I didn't want your... to crack into a second because yeah. there's more black on this. There's, there's more of the charcoal. Um, this guy, I can't remember if this was two or three skeins. I'd have to go back and look at D. O'Keefe's to tell you because... I did a lovely job of weaving all my ends in. So this might have only been two. Just FYI. All right. So those are the things I finished with the yarn and has been in progress for a while. And someday I will finish is the sweater that I'm making from, it's caught on, my barber cords are caught on other things. The sweater that I'm making for my Ready, Set, Raglan book the yellow one. It is a two by two rib. And I changed colors because one of their versions changed colors at the sleeve separation. It is, this is, I mean, feel it's squishy. Oh, oh yeah. It's like, I'm going to love wearing this. It, it doesn't feel like scratchy wool. It's merino. So it's squishy, but I'm not going to put it in the washing machine to wash it only to spin it out. If, if I block this, um, I don't I use, think you need to. I probably won't need to. Yeah, that's that's the thing. It's like you can sometimes to size things or help stitches settle. If you like how something turns out when you're done with it, th there are different schools of thought on if you need to block it. But so this has two different kind of tealy blues, the light and the dark. And it's so hard to photograph for morning meditations and things because the two colors, like the camera doesn't want to get them both right. But they're both kind of a warm tealy aqua something more teal than aqua yeah go ahead the lighter one is color zero three or turquoise pebble and it's on the the more muted mm -hmm. teal spectrum mm -hmm. it's so pretty and You're then the so darker one is a uh, zero four blue coral blue coral and that's much deeper teal. it's a deeper teal it's nice they're they're both kind of like all these colors are somewhat muted Oh, none of them are like the, super yeah. saturated intense like the um and i have two i'm doing the sleeves two at a time so i've been i've probably used two to three skeins of each color for this sweater to make it work um i haven't put the collar on like this is one of the more saturated of the colors and it's still not super saturated right so it's another thing i like about the yarn um and last night i decided again because because the stitch definition is so good the Melanie Rice um, tumbling shawl that's got some simple cable lines and bobbles in it, I am going to make out of the capers colorway. And what number is that? 20. 20. So this, I mean, think about capers on like your salmon or your whatever. Like It's a nice olive. It's a nice olive -y color. That's yeah. what I said online on, on yeah. the morning meditation today too. But it's like, think about what color capers are. I, I keep looking at this going... Hmm. which is why I started something last night. Mm -hmm. The Now the shawl I've started is probably going to take two, if not three of these. And it's the bottom edge. Like think about a triangle top edge and two bottom, like the two bottom sides is the first row of the shawl. So it's over 400 stitches and I'm still not there yet. I cast on all these stitches last night and this morning, still not there yet. 
but I think the stitch definition is going to be awesome. Like I'm making the cowl out of the Saxony and it's cute. It's, it's a little like the stitch definition is a little irregular chunky because it's so soft. I think this is both going to be springy and soft in a different way and have fantastic stitch definition. And I love this color. And I don't think like, it's not the same color as what I'm wearing. It's a different, we green. don't have a lot of olive in the shop. And we've got some of the pea soup color. Yeah. Um, the brighter greens, the more evergreens, we don't have an olive green. So, and I do love green. So let's go through what the other colors are. And then we can quick tell you about a fun little notion we have in the shop that I'm going to try to get up online. So what color, I mean, I'm making, I've made things out of a lot of colors, but that's just a fraction of all the colors we have. What you got? This one, it's, uh, it's a nice, like color 17. It's dark brown. It's a nice chocolatey, like wood brown, right? Wood that 70%, almost 70% dark chocolate. Like it's just darker than milk chocolate but not yeah. like bitter chocolate yeah anyway I, I keep looking at this one too going mm -hmm. it's not as dark as the bitter chocolate like chocolate chocolate color of the cascade 220 um it's a little bit lighter than yeah that, more muted than that because all of these are a little muted you know um instead we were trying to find someone they wanted to make a sweater out of a red so we mm -hmm. both have this color but um, and this isn't a bright red. It's more like the strawberry kind of in the, the, the fiber space, but it's a different yarn. So it has a different look. It's a mid range kind of like I'm trying to find the right words for this type of red. It's, it's like a matte finish on a red pepper, not with the shiny, okay. and, but, and it's you the know. color number 13 chili yeah. pepper. Yeah. yeah. If you take the shine off of, you know, um, it's kind of, it's more of an orangey red. It's, it's yeah. not like super orangey, but it's, yeah, it's right in the middle. It's kind of like the garnet reds we have yes. in the heritage. Yes. Close to that, but that's even more corally than this. So, um, and we already have one up on display. So go for another neutral. This one's another neutral. It is color 16. It is called latte and it looks like latte. It looks like coffee with milk in it. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's a nice tan. Um, let's go to a non-neutral, but, uh, this is blue indigo. It's num color number six. It's a denim -y blue. It's, it's a very denim -y classic blue as opposed to the teals that we showed you before. And it's, it's on the lighter side. It's not super saturated or super dark. So what you got? I have color number 18. It's, it's called pumpkin, but it's I'd a, almost it's say it's good... almost more carrot. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. I would say carrot to pumpkin. It's a nice solid orange. I mean, yeah. if anything, like the orange and the purple are some of the brighter of these colors, right? Um, I think that one kind of goes along with it. So why don't we do that one? It's color number 19. It's called gold, but it's almost daffodil yellow. Like mm -hmm. it's that buttercup, buttercup maybe. yellow. It's, I, it's wouldn't... I mean, it's a muted gold. It's yeah. not a super saturated intense gold. If we're going to call it a gold. A lot of these have very, it's an orangey, orangey yellow kind of like not, not orange, orange, but it's like, it's a warm yellow. That's what yes. it's for. The so, orange, so. the, uh, the yellow, the red, the green that you're about to do. Well, I was going to do this one. And first. the blue are almost like your pack of crayons when you're coloring. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know. Well, okay. This is silver. This is nine color number nine, just to finish up the neutrals. And it's a nice, it's one of those elephant gray lighter elephant gray um silvers i don't know it's not really shiny silver right but it's a lighter gray um that's you can do the the other green we have because this is the capers and this is more of a of a duller like this is more of a deeper color that's almost a, a brown green right that i'm doing my shawl out of there's a bright green this one's 22 it's called ivy and it's ivy green i mean it's almost the color of your pacific your pacific sports much more intense and shiny and it's a more muted version yeah. of what she's doing her pacific sports yeah. sweater out of it and it's it's a nice vibrant green for this this yarn yeah um the last i chose i'm hanging on to this one for last it's the one that the it the dye seems to have overtaken all the slubs um it is burgundy and it is a deep like purpley red it's definitely like burgundy like a merlot wine 
And this is the one we have the least amount of stock on. I want to say we have fewer than five of these, but everything else we should have pretty decent stock on for like sweater quantities and stuff. If you're interested in this color and want more than we have in stock, then you should contact the shop. So um, these will all be as soon as I get it fixed in the system, which should be before the video is published. These are all 15% off for the next I week. I did not say how much we're selling. Oops but they're 15% off with the code product of the week with spaces between all the words through next Tuesday. 15% off the retail price that we are selling them for is 15 25. Mm -hmm. uh, now tomorrow, tomorrow you can save 20% off. You can use my birthday discount all day tomorrow. You can save 20% off your entire purchase with the code birthday four five, because I'm turning 45 tomorrow. You can't combine these codes. You can use one code per purchase. And I would say save 20% on your whole purchase. It's probably better than 15% on one item. Um, before we run away though, I, I I think these are super cute. And I just wanted you all to know they're out there and I'm gonna try to get them on the website today. So these are our stitch marker organizers or small notion organizers that we have. They come in a couple different colors, four different colors choice of two different stickers on the top you can either get one that says has our dragon sun dragon or fiber or i'm a viking at sun dragon we have we should have stock available in all colors with two different options of front so you have to use multiple drop down menus to pick um the so we've got let's let's do the colors first um, and these retail for 7.95 by the way and then let's talk about what they are so colors we have a pink with a green latch on the front. I have a blue with a pink latch on the front. What do you have? I have gray with a red latch on the front. And that one is, I call move, but it's, it's like a purpley something. Yeah, right? with a bright green latch. And so you open up the latch. It's the same color latch that's on the pink is on the move. You open up the latch and then you can open the whole thing up. You have compartments on both sides, small and, and large. And those compartments you can put, I, Carol has used these quite effectively. Yeah. These compartments you can put, if you want to organize your stitch markers, different types, different numbers into all these different compartments. There are 10. There are four big and six small. And the small ones are, there's a couple different sizes of the small ones, like depending on if it's the middle or the edges. But this can be really great. Uh, I would say it's not quite big enough for like sewing needles and things like that. It really works well for stitch markers and things of stitch marker sizes. But if you have a lot of different types of stitch markers, this could be a great travel accessory to have some of those on hand. I can tell you when I'm home at night for sit and stitch and I'm just like, I have nothing around me. I maybe have a couple of, of medium sized stitch markers floating around on the table. If I kept them organized. I, I could just have a pack and say, here they are. Ha ha ha. So again, we've got four colors. We have two different sticker front options. The dragon, our shop logo, or I'm a Viking. And I will get those up into the online shop today. And you can save 15% off of these little guys for the next week. So um, as always, remember, we have t-shirts now in stock. And tomorrow could be a really good day to get yourself a t-shirt in the mustard yellow or the royal blue in your size um and i'm just super excited i'm still plotting on those i know i keep mentioning it every single time i'm still plotting on what we're going to do for the viking ones if you have suggestions we've already gotten some from jeff and some other people just let us know we need to go open the shop yes but tomorrow is dear becky and lizzie we have some questions. We have some thoughts of what we're going to talk about. We'll try to address. If you would like to get things into the queue to have them addressed on our Thursday episodes, you should email Liz at sundragonartandfiber.com. And Friday, we we did get a letter. So yes, we have some emails and we got a letter. Yep. Um, Friday is another virtual sit and stitch. We had a nice one last night from seven to 9 PM and you get in with the shop phone number. 828-877-3550. And this Sunday is our November Sunday, um, virtual dual platform sit and stitch. We're going to, I will be on Facebook live and zoom the the same window with our shop phone number will be open from 1 to 5 p.m eastern u.s time 
if uh, Zoom is challenging or you're not into that, you can always open up uh, Facebook to our page and hear what's going on and see what I'm working on. Or you can join in on Zoom. We always love having new people there and returning people. It's all lovely. So we got to go. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a good Wednesday. Bye.